is education for societal transformation. Let's start by asking why do we need societal transformation and what does it mean to have societal transformation at this time in the evolution of our planet? Because we always had societal transformation, we always have evolution that brings transformation with it. But we are living at a time where we see what is, what is often called the, the great acceleration in the evolution and the change that comes with it of our planet. And there the question then is, why do we actually see that? And why do we see the pressures that push us into the space of need for accelerated transformation? Because I think that that is an important distinction that we have to make. And in my view, it clearly is the belief that humankind had for a long time that our planet is limitless. Limitless in space, limitless in resources, limitless in giving us what we ask it to give us. Now we learn increasingly on many fronts that this of course is not the case. The, the planet does have limits and we are pushing them. And in some cases you could, uh, you could say we actually have transgressed them. And that actually is felt more and more. Now we have responded by saying, well, we have to transform virtually all the systems on the planet. And we typically justify that by saying we have reached planetary boundaries. If you look at the planetary boundary hypothesis, which often is used, and I think there is some, some good reason for it, they are all environmental boundaries. Then you have to ask, why are we actually reaching environmental boundaries? Well, it is the decisions that we as humans, individuals, groups, nations, global society have made in the way we live on that planet. And so in that sense, we, we actually have forced the need to respond to these pressures and to transform at a, a very rapid rate. That, that then asks uh, the question of what, what does that mean? What, what option space do we have? And typically we are starting to look at transformation of systems that are actually easier to capture like technological systems, like the energy system, new energy grids, um, power systems. Um, the, we, we are looking for technical solutions to the climate problem, to the water problem, to the food problem. That all is important. We have to understand that, but we will not succeed if we don't understand what I would shorthand, what is the societal will understand how do people make decisions that would get us out of that pressure situation into a situation where we have more options. In a way, we have to stop narrowing the option space for future generations coming to education and coming to youth. We have to shape our future in a way that allows life to thrive on a healthy planet. Now, that, that sounds simple, but it's not that simple because there are a lot of complexity in, in complexities in that. In order to get to the understanding of what is the quote unquote societal will, we have to recognize that we are driven not by insight, but most of what drives us are value systems. These value systems are typically long lasting and long living. And to address them means to first of all, recognize them, and, and confront them. What that then means in terms of moving closer to the part of the education, we have to approach that more from a full system understanding. And if I look at full system study, you know, social sciences is not yet where it should be. We often, when we have projects that need a good balance between all the sciences, including social sciences, humanities, natural sciences, engineering sciences, medical sciences. Social sciences are often attached at the last moment as something that we say, oh, and we, by the way, we need social sciences to understand, you know, aspect ABC, typically as an afterthought, not fully integrated. So I would say social sciences have to be moved to a level where they are recognized equally 
with all the other sciences. Uh, having grown up in the German system, moving to the US system where I spent the last 30 plus years, in the US, social sciences and humanities are not even called science. Science are the quote unquote hard sciences. And then there is all that other stuff, the fluffy stuff, right? That, that we, we sometimes tolerate, sometimes we don't even tolerate. We, I think a fundamental precondition of getting to transformation, social transformation is to change our perception of who in academia has to contribute what. And in the Global Futures Laboratory, for example, being trained as a physicist, I actually moved the understanding of societal will, which means putting social sciences, humanities into the center of what we are doing, not minimizing what we have to do to understand the environmental systems, but recognizing that all our understanding of the environmental systems will not need to transforming to a better future if we are not understanding the societal will, which means understanding uh, how uh, society can be transformed. And that means bringing social sciences, psychology, um, even humanities into the center. And that is a process that is not yet as developed, not as fast as it should be. Now, how can we help students to get in onto a different track? It, it really has to radically change the way we train. We cannot continue to train our students along disciplinary lines. We have to really get them more into a domain where they learn system thinking, where they learn to understand complex systems. That can be from intuitive understanding to fully quantitative understanding, but without having a feeling what complexity is, we cannot find our way in our world because our world is the ultimate complex system and we are living in it. We are shaping it. The question is, are we shaping it purposefully or are we shaping it stochastically? So, so there are some, some real fundamental questions that we not just have to contemplate, but that we have to start to implement measures to overcome some of the impedances that get us to that. And I think it's, it's up to all of us who have some influence over where our academic institutions are going, because this is looking at where academia sits in all of that. And be brave sometimes and somewhat disruptive and quote unquote radical in our thinking and try it. I can assure you, if you are working with the young people, they are often ahead of us. They are receptive to that. They have the mindset that you, we often hear, you cannot expose students to such a broad agenda. You, you have to let them learn something that they know well. And after that, let them dabble into other things. That's absolutely the wrong way to do it. We have to expose them early on to the broad set of issues, to the complexity of them. And with the digital world that we are in, the fact knowledge almost can be pulled in to a certain extent, real time, if you understand the underlying dynamics of complex systems. They are, they are with it. They can do it better than we are. We have to let go of trying to control everything and create space where the young people actually have a voice in what education should look like, a voice in what the purpose is, and a voice in how they see the future of the planet. 